In this video, we are going to go over how to install a zone valve head. A zone valve allows you to independently control the heat in different areas of your house or building. The zone head looks like this, and it's usually made by Taiko or Honeywell. In this case, this is a Taiko zone valve. And the reason why you might replace a zone valve is because you might, for example, have heat in the kitchen but not in the bedrooms, or if you have a multi-tenant house and one of the apartments doesn't have heat. So in order to get started, the first thing to do is basically identify which zone head is bad. You can use a voltmeter to find out which zone head is bad, but I'm going to show you a few ways to figure this out without using a voltmeter. So you can see here underneath the zone valve head, there's an arrow. That arrow indicates the way that the hot water flows. In this case, it's flowing towards the arrow. So knowing this, we can go ahead and try to listen to see if the water is flowing through the zone valve. Or we can put our hand underneath the zone valve head and see if it's warm. It should be very, very hot if the water is not flowing through because it's being stopped at the zone valve. So when you put your hand underneath the zone valve, that zone valve should be extremely hot. Be careful doing this, just slightly touch it and then compare it to the other zone heads and see if there's a temperature difference. Usually the one that's extremely hot is the one that's not working. You can also try to feel the pipes for that particular loop to feel if there's water flowing through. Another thing you can do is try to listen and hear for water flow near the valve. Another thing you could do is if you notice that the valve has this little lever, if you pull this lever down, what you're going to do here is manually open up this zone and allow the water, the hot water, to flow to that particular zone and therefore increase temperature in the room. Now, you'll notice that when you press this down on a zone that's already working and open, it's going to be easier to pull it down. However, if that zone is not working, it's going to be slightly harder to pull that lever down and you'll feel the resistance. You'll have to use more force to pull it down. That could probably give you another clue that that zone is bad. If you still can't figure out which zone head is bad, the next thing to do is manually pull that lever down, make your way towards the part of the house that had no heat, and see if you can feel the heat coming on. Touch the baseboard, see if it's warming up. Basically, you want to go ahead and try to figure out if the room is getting warmer. And if that room is getting warmer, then you know that you're working with the right valve, and that's the valve that you need to replace. If you manually pull that lever down, go to that space that was previously cold, wait and see if it's warming up. If it is, you know you got that zone valve and that's the one that needs to be replaced. Now in case of an emergency and let's say you don't have the replacement head, you can go ahead and manually pull that lever down and leave it down overnight until you have the new zone head. Just remember that you can no longer control the heat to that space. You will now be at the mercy of the other zones. If the other zones are calling for heat, heat is also going to that zone where you manually pull the lever down. So once you have your new zone head, it's very important before you do anything to take a picture and really look at the wires and how they're connected to the zone head. Each corresponding wire must be connected back to the terminal screw the same way. It's extremely important that you connect things back the same way. So as you can see here, I have my new Taiko zone valve and basically looking at the back of the box, it says twist to remove or to replace. And these cost about $100 and this again is just a zone valve head and this is what we're going to replace. To get started, turn off your thermostat and then turn off your boiler. And all you got to do is turn it and twist it to remove it, which I did here. And you can see mine was extremely dirty so it's a good opportunity to go ahead and wipe it clean. Again, before you start unscrewing these wires, take note of these wires, take a picture. It's very important they go back the same way. And you can see here how I'm doing this. I'm just taking one wire from the old zone head and putting it on the new zone head. Doing it one wire at a time so I don't mess up. Once you're done with the wires, go ahead and twist it back on. As you can see, I had a little bit of trouble twisting it back on. So these screws on the bottom of the zone head, I had to loosen them up, tried it again, and then I was able to twist it back on there. Once it's back on, Go ahead and pull on the wires a little bit, make sure they're not loose, make sure they're not coming off. Double check your work, and if everything is good at this point, go ahead and turn on your boiler and turn on your thermostat. Go into that zone where you previously had no heat, and you should start to feel the heat coming on. Hopefully at this point, things are working and you're able to fix your problem, and everybody's happy. I hope this video has saved you some money and your heat is up and running, but if it's not, and you don't feel comfortable, call a professional, they'll be able to help you. Here at the end of the video, I'm going to leave you with some schematics and I'm going to leave you with some information if you want to use a voltmeter to test the terminals on the head. And thank you very much for watching. Check out my channel, leave a comment, put a like if you would enjoyed this video and it has helped you.
Thank you.